comes in touch. That's why it's our duty and privilege to fight for the sanctity of life. Thank you for joining that fight from AFA. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. This is American Family News. I'm Steve Jordahl. A Texas state senator says the commander of the scene of the school shooting in Texas was not informed of panic 911 calls from inside the school building. Senator Roland Gutierrez said during a news conference Thursday that the pleas for help from people inside Robb Elementary School in Uvalde did not make their way to school district police chief Pete Ardando. The Democrat senator who represents the city called it a system failure that the calls were going to the city police but not communicated to Ardando. The head of the Texas Department of Public Safety has said the police did not confront the gunman more quickly because Arredondo believed the situation had morphed from an active shooting to a hostage situation. Nineteen children and two teachers died. And Americans are calling for the federal government to act after recent mass shootings like in Uvalde, Texas, Buffalo, and Tulsa. Despite President Joe Biden saying his hands are tied in terms of action he could take on gun control, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said the White House is involved in legislation on gun reform. Our legislative team has been in close contact with the Hill uh, since the tragedies in Uvalde and Buffalo, uh, including through dozens of phone calls with leadership com- committees, with jurisdiction, and with the members who are involved uh, directly in, no- in negotiations. Look, he's encouraged. Uh, he's encouraged by what we're seeing on the hill the president is set to address the nation thursday night on the recent mass shootings and the recent spike in what he calls gun violence nato secretary general jens stoltenberg is visiting washington thursday and meeting with u.s defense secretary lloyd austin at the pentagon there he's being praised for his leadership at a time of russian aggression in ukraine putin wanted to weaken the rules-based international order uh, but instead he galvanized the world by his actions So uh, we continue to uh, look forward to, uh, under your leadership, adopting a a new strategic concept at the end of the month. The meeting comes ahead of the NATO official's visit to Brussels in the coming days, where he'll talk to leaders of Turkey, Finland, and Sweden as Turkey opposes those two Nordic countries applying for NATO membership. An Arizona woman indicted in 2020 on accusations of illegally collecting ballots apparently ran a sophisticated operation using her status as a well-known Democrat operative in the border city of San Luis to persuade voters to let her gather and fill in some of their ballots. That, according to records obtained by the Associated Press, 66-year-old Guermina Fuentes and a second woman were indicted in December of 2020 on ballot harvesting charges. Usually, reports of abortion pill complications are sad, but AFN's Charlie Butts reports one story out of Ohio is rather interesting. Operation Rescue is taking a look at complication reports from Ohio, where abortionists are required by law to report them. Spokeswoman Cheryl Sullinger tells AFN the latest documents reflect that 125 women suffered serious complications from using abortion pills. The largest complaint was incomplete abortions. If an abortion is incomplete, it can cause all kinds of problems for a woman. It can cause infection, but it can also cause primarily hemorrhaging. And it appears that at least five women hemorrhaged to the point where they required hospitalization and blood transfusions. Three of the women had failed abortions. The children lived, and they continued their pregnancies to term. One woman in particular, she was given a first round of abortion pills that didn't work, and she was given a second round of abortion pills that didn't work, and after that, she had apparently had enough and decided that she did not want to pursue any other abortion and decided to carry her baby to term. Sullinger says the figures could be even higher because past experience shows that some abortionists don't follow the law to report, and in other cases, the forms submitted to the state have incomplete information. I'm Charlie Butt. Wall Street had its best day in weeks, but the reason might not be something to celebrate. Investors think that a sour jobs report and fewer people entering the workforce might slow inflation. The Dow gained 435 points on Thursday. The Nasdaq gave investors 322, and the S&P 500 ended up 75.5 points to the green. For American Family News, I'm Steve Jordan. Thoughts of the child you were carrying keep pouring over in your mind, and the loss is overwhelming. A deep, unrelenting sadness overshadows your days, 
and you wonder if you will ever feel whole again. But there is hope and healing from an abortion. Call the International Helpline, 866-482-LIFE, and talk with someone who has been where you are. 866-482-LIFE. Darkness is not an affirmative force. It simply reoccupies the space vacated by the light. This is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. It should be uncomfortable for a believer to live as a hypocrite. Delivering people out of the bondage of mainstream media. And the philosophies of this world. God has called you and me to be his ambassadors. Even in this dark moment. Let's not miss our moment. And now. The Hamilton Corner. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hamilton Corner here on American Family Radio. I'm your host, Abraham Hamilton III, joined by the full corner contingent. To my left, positionally, but not ideologically, the real Jay Mizak, who's often imitated, but never duplicated. At least not successfully. Oh, Bob, you trying to draw me in. I told Jeff I wasn't going there. Bobby, all right, watch him now, y'all. Y'all got to watch him. Bobby, you enjoyed that too much. To my right, you got the provocateur today, provocateur extraordinaire, Mr. Bobby Rosa, who migrated most recently from the VA to join us here. My man said the Lord called him to put all of his irons on the fire and said for this, this last leg of this journey, we're going to just give it all to the Lord. Yeah, I'm, and I'm glad that you did. And then, in the screening room, y'all know him. <laughs> Lighting up the dark from the screening room, Mr. Marty Spar, your friendly neighborhood, recovering <laughs> with a holic. I have an idea how that recovering came into play, but I ain't going to say it right now. Well, brothers and sisters, this is indeed the day that our Lord has made. And I, for one, and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of y'all right there with me, I, for one, will rejoice and be glad in it. I was just reflecting before walking over to the studio on just the goodness of God. And um, mm, mm, mm. I I remember as as a young boy, my mom used to tell me this and her friends used to say, oh, you have an old soul. But I, I think about the songs I heard as a, as a young boy growing up in church when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me. <laughs> oh, man. I cannot fathom. I cannot fathom. Living this life, enduring this life without the grace of God and the peace that is provoked in, your, in my soul as a result of knowing the Lord. You know, there's, there's just a... There, there, we have the opportunity as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'll say it this way. In, in my grandmother's house in, in New Orleans, um, growing up, she had these elephant plant, elephant leaf plants. Y'all know these plants? I don't know the technical term for the plants. I could be wrong. I'm not a, I'm not a horticulturalist, you know. You know, I'm not a, in terms of trees, I'm not an ar- arborist, you know what I mean, you know. Uh, y'all didn't know I had that in my vocabulary. Y'all better watch me now. I, you never know what I'm going to come up with next. Um, but she had these plants, man. And uh, she had a little, she called it the alleyway. It's <laughs> just a walkway. She called it the alleyway on the side of her house where she had these big elephant plants. And I used to always go out there after, after it rained. And I would just, I was fascinated how the water would beat up on these plants. And roll off of them. You know, it's like the, the rain drops could not penetrate these plants. Now, obviously, they're plants. They're nourished by water. But the, the water would bead and roll, bead and roll, bead and roll. And um, that became a, a, a picture for me of what it meant to be in the world and not of it. Now, you have these plants, obviously, in the world. Obviously, the elements of the earth impact the plant, so to speak. But in terms of that, those raindrops and that water, they would hit the plant, <laughs> but not infect the plant, if you, if you know what I mean. The plant, the water, the, the drops would hit the plant at the leaf, but that the drop wouldn't penetrate the plant at the leaf. And that's what it, it began. I mean, listen, the plant would minister to me. It, it, 
made me think about the Proverbs, made me think about my favorite scientist, George Washington Carver, how he used to, he was noted for spending hours just walking through forests and walking in the greenery. And he would talk about how the Lord peeled back the curtain on his creation and allowed him to see in. And that's how he came up with, <coughs> excuse me, all of his inventions and his ideas and all of these things. And I would say, Lord, that's what it looks like to be in the world and not of it. We're in the world, but the world is not in us, <laughs> you know. That, that those beads of water could not penetrate or did not penetrate those elephant plant leaves. And as believers, man, we have the opportunity to process everything that's going on around us without the things that are going on around us to enter us. You get what I'm saying? Like we have a different vantage point from which to do life. And what a great forfeiture it is for us to abandon our station in Christ and to lament and to... Um, to, to writhe as if we are not sealed in him. What a forfeiture it is. So as many of you at this very moment are making that transition from your part-time jobs, where you generate an income to your full-time jobs, where you cultivate an outcome, I just want to invite you, man, to, to, to bask in the glories of your own testimony. Like, welcome uh, allow the Lord to walk you through, you know. Um, what an amazing, amazing thing to be in Christ. What an amazing thing to be in Christ. And from that position, as you transition to your full-time job, as you have the opportunity today to minister to those whom the Lord has placed you in the most immediate relationship and most intimate relationship with, may you minister well. Minister well. Today we're going to go to First John. 1 John chapter 3. Oh, man. 1 John chapter 3. Verses 1 through 4. 1 John chapter 3. Verses 1 through, <clears throat> excuse me, 4. Here we go. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That we would be called children of of God. <laughs> and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us because it didn't. It did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him mm. because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. Oh, oh praise God for his so right at the beginning, this is the Apostle John. We know through the study of our family's eternal, our eternal family's history, that the Apostle John was the uh, longest living of the Messiah's apostles. And um, he was the, the one who discipled Polycarp. Um, and he is the apostle that would, would preach and preach about how love was intrinsic to Christ's follower. You know, he is the apostle that would say, how could you profess to be in the light yet hate your brother? Guys, it's not possible. It's not possible. He would say, love is the principal thing. Hmm. Well, the apostle John begins this portion of his epistle. And remember, there, were no chapter, there, are, there are no chapter and verse demarcations in the original Greek manuscripts. Uh, so this is an epistle meant to be consumed in one sitting, which I would wholeheartedly commend to you. Um, he is marveling, very similar to the Apostle Paul's marveling in 1 Timothy chapter 1. He says, how great a love the Father has bestowed on us. Mm. That we will be called children of God. Oh, man, I, I sometimes I, I look at some of the I call it the intramural squabblings within the church. 
you know, denominational squabblings and, you know, this one is this and this one is that. And it makes me think, man, have we forgotten what a massive undertaking it is, first and foremost, for us to be in Christ to begin with? Oh, man. And it's so easy. And, and I describe it this way when we, when we become professionalized in our Christianity, you know. So you become a major on other people's sins and, and you live as if you have been perfected. And, you know, those of us who have matured to some degree, uh, we, we, we sometimes think, live and act as if we've always been this, you know. I've always known that J-O-B in the scripture was the book of Job and not Job. Keep it real, player. You used to call it the book of job, too. You used to kill, call it the book of the keep. Keep it real, player. You know, you know how many times it took for you to get through the book of Leviticus. Don't try to front like you read the whole thing on the first sitting. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. <laughs> I pray for myself often. I encourage our local congregation often. May we never graduate from being awed. By the great and glorious grace that was bestowed upon us that the Lord would save us. And then it says that we will be called children of God. Brothers and sisters, regeneration is the greatest miracle any of us will ever, ever experience. Regeneration, spiritual re regeneration, I would argue, is an even more astounding miracle than the physical resurrection of Lazarus. <laughs> Why can I say that? Because our physical bodies really are the composition of Dirt compilation. But to have the, the dead and cold heart to be quickened alive, as the Apostle Paul talked about that we read yesterday in Ephesians chapter 2. What a miracle. What a miracle. What a miracle. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about before you were born again, how you, how you lived in such a way to where the things you did and thought and experienced, you had it even register as being noteworthy. Then you become born again. And you think, oh, my gosh, how could I have been so lost, so dead, so cold to the life of Christ? The Apostle John is marveling. What great love the Father has bestowed upon us that we would be called children of God. Nevertheless, he then makes the observation, and such we are. <laughs> and for this reason, the world doesn't know us. Guys, I know I've said this a lot, but I'm going to say it again. The calling to follow Christ is one to peculiarity. We should not expect the world to comprehend us in fullness, nor should we seek to ingratiate ourselves to a world who the word of God says that the aroma of Christ is a stench to those who are perishing. That's why you see, see such great uh, and, and blasphemous edicts offered, you know, people who have no clue about the power of prayer. I'm tired of you guys talking about thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. That's because they don't understand the power of prayer. More importantly, they don't understand the God of prayer who is powerful. But we shouldn't be surprised by it. But the thing I want to get to is in full view of this massive grace-laden undertaking that allows regeneration for each and every one of us who know the Messiah as our Savior and our Lord. He says that all of us who have this fixed hope in him, <laughs> the accompanying quality that flows from having this eternal hope fixed in him is that every one of us purifies ourselves as he is pure. This means that we are in full agreement with our Savior's efforts by his Spirit <laughs> to conform us to the nature of the Messiah himself. That is why the most, the, the, the strongest compulsion amongst those of us who have our fixed hope in him is for the sanctification. This is why the most grievous source of sin to Christ followers would always be our own sin. And the point at which we grieve and lament the sins of those around us is the fact that if you don't know him, in the parting of your sins, you will miss out. You will neglect. You will forfeit this expansive opportunity to realize what we have been made for. Our very physical bodies 
reflect the reality that we were made for eternity. That's why you have things. You get a paper cut. You don't, you don't have some external source of healing. The skin works together to provide you new and covering skin. That is an echo from eternity past that we were made for eternity. The pursuit of holiness is right or meat for one who's given to the lifestyle of worship because it comes to us by our new natural. So there's this couple named Kyle and Katie, and they were excited. They were expecting their third child, and then they got some really bad news. Their unborn baby desperately needed surgery in utero. They had switched the way they pay their health care bills from health insurance to MediShare, so they were wondering, is this going to work? It's a life, and it's my son's life, and, you know, we should all be doing anything we can for that. Kyle knew they were looking at a mountain of medical bills. And of that, I had to pay almost nothing. We felt like MediShare was rallying behind us, almost like family. MediShare is a community of Christians who care about people like Kyle and Katie and little Liam, who is now a happy little boy who loves to play outside with his brother and sister. Yeah, you know, Liam's around because of that. We'll always remember. Find out how you can save $500 a month or more on your health care. Call 833-44-BIBLE. That's 833-44-BIBLE. 833-44-BIBLE. Persecuted Christians, they love their enemies, and they count it all joy to suffer for the Lord Jesus, but they need your help today. This is Bible League International, and in the Middle East one day, radical showed up and burned down the house house of Nora, nearly killing her and her four daughters, the youngest of which, four years of age, maimed for life with serious burns all over her body. You know what her crime is? Simply that Nora has been leading Arabic-speaking women to Christ, and they need Bibles there in the Middle East. And in Venezuela, a church has been rescuing women, some as young as 12, kidnapped and forced into prostitution by the drug cartel. They have paid dearly. In fact, one of the members was killed, his corpse pulled behind a truck, but I can tell you this group, even though they're persecuted, is focused on pointing these women to the hope of the gospel. They need Bibles. Bible League is sending God's Word to 16,000 persecuted believers. We're halfway there. We need to wrap up by the end of June. So at $5 a Bible, $100 sends 20. Would you call 800 Yes Word? 800 Yes Word. 800 Yes Word or give it sendbiblesnow.org. Sendbiblesnow.org. Let's see. If something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 833-44-BIBLE. That's 833-44-BIBLE. 833-44-BIBLE. Shining light into the darkness, this is the Hamilton Corner on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner. Man, the Apostle John was hitting it right where it needs to be. <laughs> he says in verse 4, verse 3, and everyone who has this fixed hope, has this hope fixed on him, purifies himself. The Apostle John is not articulating some works-based requirement. What he's explaining is the new natural outflow of this fixed hope. It is, uh, it is our, it's, it's like, it's like a dance, you know, it's like the waltz or a samba or, you know, a salsa, you know, don't make me get on my spavamente. Well, what y'all know about that spavamente? Y'all don't know what that's for. Listen, 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 I look, I'll just tell y'all this. I'm from New Orleans. Like music is in my bones. You understand me? Four-year-old second line in the streets. When I come. If you are a fan of live instrumentation, you will not find a more pristine exhibition of trumpeted glory than salsa music. I'm telling you. Man, the way that they punctuate those trumpet... Man, I'm sorry. Let me stay focused. But it's, 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 like, it's, it's like a dance to where the Messiah is the lead in the dance. 
And when you're endeavoring to be that, that appropriate partner, you respond to that lead. When you see, oh, God, oh, man. When you are confronted with the great depths of the reality of God's grace, mm, and it is in its application, in its personal application, and I said this yesterday, when you have been captured by Christ, the only appropriate response is to move from giving offerings to becoming the offering. You know, those who have been captured by his grace are not the ones who respond, well, how much can I do and still be saved? You understand? What I'm, listen, and, and God is gracious. He knows that we, go, we grow from glory to glory to glory. The response is, Lord, what must I do? To be saved. And the Lord responds, there's nothing you must do. It is a gift to be received. Well, what occurs is that the doing responsibly flows from having received the gift. It is the appropriate stewardship, if you will, of the gift. So those of us who have this fixed eternal hope, because we have this fixed eternal hope, we say, oh, Lord. From a position of grace receipt, from a context of covenantal commitment. Mm. When the Lord says, you know what, our relationship, I have sealed it with my own spirit. The only appropriate response, as the Apostle John lays out, is for this reason, we seek to purify ourselves. We, it is our lifestyle becomes the lived out cry that is he not worthy of this? It's, it's like... <laughs> As a result, this, this is a, a crude and natural analogy, but I'm trying to make it understandable. It is in, in full view of my wife committing herself and her life to me as a husband. It is my esteemed privilege and honor to provide for her, to be a covering for her. It's not because she's standing over there chewing her gum out the side of a corner. I'm out. Nah, but you know what you signed up for. No, it is in view of this. This, this covenantal investment, man, I get, I get to serve my wife in this way. Oh, man, how much we forfeit when we allow the world to chirp us into a worldly response to our Christ following. That, this, this is why, look, in my neighborhood, it, this was popular. A lot of the girls used to say this, talk to the hand because the face ain't home. Leave a message at the tone. Beep. That's why I ain't studying what the world has to say. What kind of foolishness would it be for me to allow the world to give me my marching orders as a Christian? Because if you haven't noticed yet, the world knows nothing about the Bible, but they'll show tell you what Christians are supposed to do. You'll have this, this consistent refrain as a punctuation to any agenda item of the day. Right? If you really are a Christian, you will be concerned about those around you enough to sacrifice your rights. <laughs> Is it the call to follow Christ to love your neighbor? Oh, I am so looking forward. It's not this week, but next week we're going to have my sister Miki on. Oh, man, I'm just going to give you all this. This is a teaser, but you need to listen to the show. Miki Addison. She was teaching our children at our local church and explaining to them the biblical difference between empathy and compassion. <laughs> oh, I ain't going to say much more because if I get going, I'm not going to be able to stop. Man, listen, there are things that the Lord requires of us as body members that are the benefits of body membership that don't apply to the world. <laughs> and if we're not intentional, <laughs> you'll find yourself allowing the world to manipulate you into following its agenda because you profess to be a Christian. Man, may you never graduate from being awed by being made members of God's eternal family. Oh, what a, what, a, what a rich inheritance it is. In the pursuit of holiness, and look, I know what the world's trying to do. Jude, the Apostle Jude warned us, false brethren, that's fake, that's fake jakers, will pervert the grace of God into lasciviousness, to try to turn it into a license, to do whatever. Listen, the grace of God causes you to live right. It is the grace of God that says, oh, no, we don't do that on this side. 
It's the grace of God that says worship is a lifestyle. My body is not even my own. How am I going to let you tell me to use the members of the Lord's body that he's graced me to steward on this side of eternity to, to participate in sinful engagements? The Apostle Paul explained that when you use your physical body as an instrumentality of rebellion and sinfulness, most sin is performed externally, but then you convert the temple of the living God into a, into a seeding place of whoredoms. Or, or, or we just going to talk. They say, well, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. <laughs> oh, brothers and sisters, it is because we have this fixed hope that we seek to pursue purity. Here's another, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here, but here's another thing. There's a distinction between, between purity and abstaining from certain conduct. You could have those who abstain from particular conduct, but in their hearts they're yearning for the very thing they're externally professing abstention from. Now, don't get me wrong. Abstention is far better than engaging in it, but Christ came not merely to conform us in conduct like a Pavlovian dog. He came to transform us at a desire level to where the things we crave are transformed. It's kind of like, man, I'm telling you, I'll never forget when I had the experience of having real grape juice and real apple juice instead of that sugar-laden stuff that you got that I used to get from the grocery store. And before the grocery store, we used to get in the commodity line. Y'all don't know about the commodities. When they had this thing that was reported to be cheese that came in a cardboard box. <laughs> the first time I, I said, well, I ain't selling that in the store. And, and let me tell you what happened to me. After I tasted real grape juice, I couldn't drink that concentrated sugary substitute and counterfeit that was sold in the store. It wasn't because I had become sedity. It's because I had tasted the real, which caused my appetite to change. Now, if something could happen with something so basic and simple as grape juice, how much more would having tasted the grace of our God? Man, I'm, we, ain't out here, we ain't out here just fronting, trying to be separate for separatist's sake. We ain't out here trying to impose. Look, I say out here, Lord. I went back to the ninth world. We ain't out here trying to impose our self-arrived at code of morality. Man, there's a Messiah <laughs> where eternity hangs in the balance, man. The reason why we stand first and foremost, and I say it, and I always will say it, the call to follow Christ is not to export what we have not imported. It's simply sharing what we have received. As the apostle John and Peter said, man, silver and gold have I none, but such as I do have, I want to share with you. Man, Christ didn't come merely to conform our conduct. If you are satisfied at the conduct level, let me encourage you that there's an entire bank of our inheritance that you are ignoring and neglecting. There is great value for being able to do life on this side of eternity, even when you have record high inflations, even with record high gas prices, even with somebody who loves ice cream more than he loves policy. Oh, Lord. Occupying the Oval Office. Because we can be like that beaded, that, that, that elephant ear plant. <laughs> yeah, I see what's going on around us. And those sources of information may be factual, but they ain't truth with a capital T. Because truth ultimately is a person. Oh, man. That's why, man, I so resonate <laughs> with the Hebrew writer when he says, man, how, how then shall we escape if we neg neglect, neglect, neglect so great a salvation? Neglecting it. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Oh, oh, Lord, I love you, and I'm grateful to be in your family. All right, I want to pick up where, man, our brother Brandon called in yesterday at the end of the show, and, man, he was dropping bombs, and then the, the disrespectful music came in. Brother Brandon from Texas. <laughs> you don't know this, but my little brother's name, Brandon. My children call him Uncle B. What up, Uncle B? Brandon was lamenting the reality as it concerns <laughs> in utero baby murder where he mentioned and it's almost as if he didn't say these words but it's almost as if and has anybody not noticed that you, 
you have about 13% of the population amongst more, more melanated people that are responsible for nearly half of the abortions in, in this country. That since Roe versus Wade, which by God's grace, that we are days or weeks away from seeing that atrocity filed into the dustbins of American history. But since 1973, are we unaware that five times the population of the state of Louisiana, seven times the population of the state of Mississippi have been annihilated in our country? And nobody wants to say anything about that. Why is there a louder protestation about that? And I've mentioned before, that Satan's plan is to destroy everybody. <laughs> you know, he's not stuttering and stammering, being satisfied with having this disproportionate reality. So we need to understand that. But in this era where, you know, the fanciful wording of the day is people of color, which y'all know I, I don't get it. And I said it before, I'll say it again. Every human being is a person of color. You know, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the facts. <laughs> don't get mad at me. Every single person, every one of us, Marty, Bobby, Jeff, me, all of us have the same biological component in our bodies. It's called melanin. Even those who have the genetic deficiency in the form of albinism, they still have some. It's a genetic deficiency, but all of us have melanin. Melanin is what is the biological source of determining the depiction of our skin color. God is the one who determined how much you and I have. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. Don't be mad at me because the Lord blessed me with more than you. But we all have it. There is not one person running around here, Casper the friendly ghost style. And even Casper on TV was white. <laughs> he had a color. Everybody's a person of color. Ain't no translucent people running around here talking about something. Ooh. Everybody's a person of color. There's no clear translucent people. All right, putting that aside. You know, <laughs> but there's a reality that in this very moment, I mean, you, you literally have, and I, it, it, this is just astounding. I told you guys before, the University of Washington's chair of the English department decided, hey, you know what? If you happen to be an ethnic minority, we're not going to require to use proper English in the English class. And the whole point of that is what? Equity? <laughs> How are you going to lift up the slate? of a group of people are saying, you know what? If you only you can do is speak Ebonics, that's cool with me. And that's supposed to help. Guys, that's, that is bigotry to say that because of the ethnicity, because of my ethnicity, I'm incapable of articulating the English language and you're saying you're helping. Mm, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Newsflash, oh, you're not helping. You stupid. Say it, say it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not helping. You, you, let me try to put this in context for you guys. Context for you guys, right? Here in our country, in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're telling minorities, hey, don't learn English. Where in China and in India and in other countries, they're teaching their children to become bilingual, to learn English, so they can capitalize on the very system that people say to people like me, who grew up in the hood like me, oh, it's just irrepressibly suppressive and oppressive. Guess who's crippling? And not helping. Goodness gracious. But getting back to Brandon's comments, he's absolutely right. Guys, and, th and this is why, this is why you can't allow the talking snake and Gerbil Zinc to drive your engagement. Brandon's comment struck a chord with me because I've been reading and sharing with my children some of the writings of Booker T. Washington. In the late 19th century, not, not just a popular writings, the most popular, I should say, like his speech in Atlanta in 1865 and his book Up From Slavery, which are tremendous resources. But Booker T. Washington continually addressed the reality that post the elimination of slavery, that the population of American descendants of African slaves were about 13% of the American population. Now, here we are literally in the 21st century, and the population is exact, exactly the same. Proportionally, about 13 to 14 percent of the national population in America. Yet all of these people are talking about, we want to help the minority. We want to do this. How about, let me give you an example of one way to help. Stop advocating for slaughtering us. 
How about that? You're saying that Black Lives Matter? How about stop killing them in the womb? How about stop killing us in the womb? That you have states, entire states worth of populations of Americans, of African ancestry, born in this country, that would have been born in this country. You want to say their lives matter and at the same time say slaughter them in the womb. One of these things are not like the other. These are not people who intend to help anything. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr, president of the American Pastors Network, a growing national network of pastors committed to the authority of Scripture and preaching the whole counsel of God. We believe biblical obedience is the foundation for revival and impacting our culture for Christ is our duty. For too long, the pulpits of America have been silent on the important issues such as marriage and family and assault on our liberty. Join us in the battle for truth on Stand in the Gap weekend, Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. on American Family Radio, and visit us at AmericanPastorsNetwork.org. Hi, this is Pastor Robert Morris. I'm often asked, how do I grow in my relationship with the Lord? How do I hear God? What is God's plan and purpose for me? I want to personally invite you to join me on Sunday mornings right here on AFR for worship and the Word. And we will discover the answer to these questions together. We'll explore the truths found in God's Word that will help you strengthen your faith and develop a more intimate relationship with Him. The following are real life stories from Trinity Debt Management. My story begins with debt, a lot of debt. I used my credit cards as a source of income. It was not a good situation. I couldn't pay my bills. The interest on the cards was really high. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-788-1813. I initially was scared to call and immediately I felt relief. They contacted all of our creditors and they put us on a plan for success. Trinity will consolidate your accounts into one easy to manage monthly payment, reduce your interest, and possibly improve your credit score. You'll save thousands. I've been able to pay off close to $15,000. We're doing a lot better. Please pick up the phone and see how affordable and easy it is to pay off your debt. It's a godsend. We're debt free for keeps. Call Trinity at 1 800 788 1813. That's 1 800 788 1813. Hello, Americans. I'm Todd Starn. Stand by for news and commentary next. Take advantage of the warmer weather and come explore Liberty University's campus, ranked number four best college campus in America by Niche.com. Join us for Experience LU, an all-day event that shows off our dorm rooms, classrooms, and award-winning dining hall. Or, if you're short on time, attend a four-hour student-led campus tour to hit the highlights. To learn more or schedule your visit to Liberty University, text visit LU to 49596. Again, that's visit LU to 49596. It's Pride Month, 30 days of celebrations honoring the LGBTQ crowd. For the record, our Lord only gets two days, Christmas and Easter. Hmm. Big business, big media, big tech, all decked out in the rainbow colors, falling all over themselves trying to confirm their diversity bona fides. Even NASCAR has gone rainbow woke, surprising their mostly conservative fan base. The Marines decorated a combat helmet with rainbow-colored bullets and the U.S. Embassy in Rome flying the gay pride flag. The U.S. Embassy at the Holy See. For the records, Roman Catholics teach that homosexual acts are a grave travesty. But most Democrats are Catholics in name only. And they have demonstrated that given the choice, they will gladly crucify their beliefs to earn favor with the LGBT crowd. I'd like to recommend you read my book, Culture Jihad, How to Stop the Left from Killing a Nation. It's available at your favorite bookstore and online at ToddSterns.com. <laughs> The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and one-minute commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner, man. I did not know we were going to go this way, but we did. We'll open the phone lines. This segment, if you want to join the show, you're welcome to do so. The number to call is 888-589-8840. That number again is 888 888- 589-8840. Anything we've discussed today and that, or that we're about to discuss is on the table for your commentary, your conversation, and question. All right, back to what I'm back to what I was saying. And Brandon was making this point yesterday, man. Brandon from Texas. How can you say, and, and it, it is high time that Americans start to have ask these questions, right? And I, and the potential imminent 
The potentially imminent reversal of Roe versus Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey creates the opportunity to finally have this dialogue in a policymaking context on the state level because for the longest, regressives have just hid behind Roe. Roe v. Wade. Support women. Even though the majority of pro-lifers are women. <laughs> so you're not supporting all women. You're supporting some women who agree with you about killing children in the womb. All right. How can you say Black Lives Matter and say we need a right to reproductive justice? Over 20 million dead would have been minority Americans. Beg to differ. And, and it, it is just, <laughs> you, you want to talk about the type of alarm <laughs> you literally have people saying, I mean, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary. This this is, and I was saying, saying this to my, my brother Mark Ost, who records my one-minute Hamilton Minute commentaries. I was saying, listen, man, just because somebody has letters behind their names, just because people have positions in certain sectors of society, doesn't mean that they're wise. You had Janet Yellen saying, oh, it's been such a blessing, a boost for our economy to have the right to kill children. It's like, um, when has eliminating the population been a boon for the economy? It's just, it don't make sense. And here, this is supposed to be the Treasury Secretary. Her job is economic. It's, it's just when you have a sinful commitment. Y'all heard me say this before. Sin makes you stupid. It does. It does. And when you consider the volume, the volume, like to really put this in perspective, Descendants of African slaves have been in America since there was an America. You know, we were teaching our children history at home, and a lot of Americans know the name of Benedict Arnold, you know, being the, the traitor and all of that. Do you realize that the only reason why we know a Benedict Arnold exists is because of a more melanated <laughs> descendant of African slaves named James Armistead, who was, became a confidant of George Washington, who gained the trust of Lord Cornwallis in the British Army, who they allowed to follow Benedict Arnold around. I mean, we've been here since there's been a here in terms of the American Republic. Do you realize that the descendants of African slaves in America are a smaller minority group than people in our country of Spanish-speaking ancestry? Do you realize that? A lot of people don't realize that. There are more... People in America, quantitatively, right at this moment, with Spanish-speaking ancestry, than of the descendants of African slaves in our country. <laughs> this is, check it out for yourself. Examine it. I know a lot of you trust me, but trust but verify. Check it out. Check it out. Yet the very people who say, oh, we want to lift up the plight of minorities are the same one that's saying kill them in the womb. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll provide the funds to do it. We'll subsidize your capacity to do so. All right, let me keep moving. Did you learn, and this, this is, and, and I wish I was kidding when I shared this story with you. I wish I was joking, but I am not joking. The mayor of San Francisco, London Breed, that is her name, London Breed, announced her five-year plan to end homelessness in San Francisco. Introduced her plan Tuesday. Funded with $6.5 million, that's the budgetary proposal, to end homelessness in San Francisco. Oh, wait, I forgot. No, end homelessness for transgender To end homelessness for transgender people. Yeah. Her plan also includes the concerns for the homelessness amongst the gender nonconforming and the LGBTQIAP plus youth, which caused lots of people around the country to stand up and say, huh, so... What if people are homeless and they don't ascribe to any of those categories? Is that not a 
problem? And it just it's just it's it's baffling to me, guys. Baffling to me. Because that just goes off and she felt confident that that was a sound policy proposal. Now, anybody who's been to San Francisco recently will probably share with you that um, there's a little problem on the streets of San Francisco that you have excrement littering the streets in San Francisco. This excrement is largely the byproduct of the prevalence of homelessness. So you are seeking solely, and look, I get it. I know it's it's political. I understand it's San Francisco, but I'm talking about the craziness that's being presented in, ter- in terms of policy. So you literally going to propose, oh, we want to address homelessness in this sector, but not everybody else. And th- this is exactly what people say when they say, hey, you're, you're, you're trying to create a supra category of people. Why, why not just create a plan in homelessness, <laughs> you know, to address homelessness, homelessness in general? You know what I mean? I mean, why not? Why not? You know, it, it, it's just. It's, it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And, and then you have. The, 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 the rampant irony that here we are and you have all these people talking about oh, it's Pride Month and it's it's it's. Again, that's why you have to apply the word of God, because you have people who want to publicly celebrate their sexual preferences, right, that are in open rebellion against the Lord. And they, many of them have sought to ascribe to themselves the symbol that God gave. It is his bow. It is God's bow. You know, just to, to put provide a bit of context, those who are who are familiar with the, with the usage of archery and things of that nature, the symbol of the bow when the arched portion is pointed away from you is an indication of peace towards you because the point where the projectile will flow from is pointed away from you. God put his bow in the sky as a symbol of his covenant not to judge the earth again by water. But let's remember what was the, the basis or the cause of this judgment is because men became exceedingly wicked doing whatever he thought right in his own eyes. Oh, yet those who are proponents of sexual rebellion against God ascribe that symbol to themselves. Irony. Then to compound that irony, they then say, and we're going to celebrate our rebellion against God with an entire month dedicated to pride, which the word of God also reveals, says that pride comes before a fall. The apostle James articulated by the spirit of God, that God resists the proud, yet gives grace to the humble. You can't make this stuff up. And you have this all transpiring at the very same time that though Goebbels Inc. will never reveal this to you, but you have in the entire panoply of alphabetically chronicle rebellion that the L's and the by and the B's and the G's are actually are at ideological contention with the T's. Because transgender ideology says there's no such thing as sex, which they would say gender. But it arises on a spectrum, 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 spectrum. Because the whole phenomenon of sex is just a social construct. But then you have those who say, but no, my entire identity is based on my sexual preference for this specified sexual identification. Seems to be a little bit of ideological inconsistency there. But they want you to believe, oh, we're a community. We are the world. That's not a community, folks. That's why you have this phenomenon. They, they've they developed the acronym TERFs. You ready for it? Trans-exclusionary radical feminists. That's what they're calling people that used to be their allies. That's what they're calling women who said, well, wait, we, we want to fight for women's rights. And because we believe in women having rights, we don't want men just waking up one day and saying that they're women and ascribing the rights we've been contending for for themselves. But another acronym, you're just a turf. That's what they call J.K. Rowling. You're a turf. I wonder if they're going to call it Astro Turf. That's a joke. I shouldn't have. But they want you to believe it's a community. We're all together. 
and it's not, guys. It, you, you, see, you see the logical inconsistency? But that shouldn't be surprising because when you reject God's way, you are forced at some point to embrace an illogical in, a logical inconsistency. That didn't stop Mayor London Breed, though. We want to solve, so we want to address homelessness. Homelessness is our issue, but but only for transgender people. Again, if you want to join the show, 888-589-8840 is the number to call. That's 888-589-8840. Then you have this little ditty. <laughs> little ditty. This news item, courtesy of Epic Times, which is a great source of information. People ask me all the time, what do you go to prepare and all of the Epic Times is a great resource. I know people don't want to hear this, but I told you I'm an equal opportunity truth teller, and I'm going to tell it. Well, based on new data unearthed by an organization called Verity Vote, new un uncovered records, newly uncovered records, show that over 19,000 ballots in Arizona's Maricopa County in the 2020 elections were counted despite having been received after the deadline. Oh, go figure. Now, just to kind of put this in context, remember the state of Arizona. Mr. Robinette was reported to having won the state of Arizona by a grand total of 10,500 votes. That was the total, right? Well, the Arizona law requires that ballots be received by 7 p.m., in Maricopa County, on election day. That's the law. That's not my opinion. That is the law in Arizona. Maricopa County's ballots must be in by 7 p.m. And the state, I'm sorry, and Maricopa County rejected only 934 late ballots, even though more than 20,000 were transported from the U.S. Postal Service after election day. Mm -hmm. After election day. <laughs> According to Epic Times' report of Verity Votes' discovery, is that the United States Postal Service shows 18,000 ballots were received on November 4th. That's the day after, November 3rd. The county also documents that it received 1,000 ballots on November 5th and 1,500 ballots on November 6th. So when you add those 2,500 to the 18,000 that were received on November 4th, that's a grand total of 20,500 ballots. But, you know, who's counting? Now, I bring this up not to say we need to redo 2020, but I'm saying don't you think people should be aware of these things as we're approaching the midterms right now? I'm just saying. To the phone lines we go. I don't want to get going. I got more to go, but. Let's get to the phone lines. We'll go to North Carolina where David is on the phone. David, thank you for calling the Hamilton Corner. Welcome to the program. I appreciate that, sir. I just want to pass along to you that I've never heard your show before until today. I'm riding down the highway, and I am just dumbfounded at how you are able to articulate very clear, honest truth. And I wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you for being so rather blunt about the truth and so non-hesitant um, and so abashed about it. Thank you. What, I'm sorry, David. Thank you for listening, but we're getting to the end of the show. I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were done. But thank you for listening, and I hope you listen some more. Jerry in Tennessee, we got about 15 seconds. Go. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you next month at the conference. Hey. Uh, se second point. Uh, I think all the homeless people in San Francisco are about to miraculously identify as trans so they can get those benefits. <laughs> now, what? I wouldn't be surprised, Jerry. Probably will sound like all of a sudden you got a bunch of hardened criminals who decide that they're women. At least if you're in California, Gavin Tucson Newsom Slusom, he's all about that life. Thank you all for tuning into the program today. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio.